from CareCo TV, one of the longest running outdoor programs on television today. Exploring the country and the coast in search of adventures. From the mountains of the great Northwest to the shores of the Atlantic Ocean, this is Americana Outdoors. Presented by Garmin. This week on Americana Outdoors, we're hitting the water with Danny Blanford and Matt McCoy of Secret Lures as they spend the day out in Kentucky Lake, throwing the bait that puts Secret Lures on the map, the stupid tube. We came down to the Kentucky Lake area to fish with Matt this week, and we spent some time on Kentucky and Barkley and got to run around. We mainly focused on the north end of the lake and tried to put together a uh, you know, a good day of fishing, throwing a secret lure stupid tube. Big day today, Matt. We've been working together on this project for a couple of years now, and first time we've actually got a chance to share a boat, so that's exciting. I'm hoping to learn something, and uh, I hope know. I can teach you something. <laughs> I know, you know, even though we haven't fished together, Matt, I know we've spent enough time on the phone and working on baits and talking about baits. I know you're uh, ultra competitive, and uh, I got to admit, I am too. So. I don't really care how many we catch as long as I catch one more than you. We're actually going to run some of the stuff that you qualified for the BF All-American in, right? So Yes, all this stuff is what I ran last year. I ran all the way from Paris to come up here and fish this way. So Gotcha, gotcha. I don't spend a ton of time fishing in September. You know, I like it in July and August. It's hot. I know what they're doing, and, and I like it in the fall. But, man, September is such a wild card to me, and I think that's especially true on Kentucky Lake. But. I think you know any fish catches are a victory at the end of the day. I mean, I, I enjoy catching them, you know, and this is a, a different way in a different place, so I'm excited about that. Here we go. It's a little in, but it starts. Are you fishing pretty slow, like where you're keeping it down in them, or are you kind of skipping across the top? Or I'm trying to fill it the whole way. Once I can't fill anything, I'm reeling it back in. And you know, I think that's something that has surprised me. You know, we we got lots of customers. Some you know, some I get to work with, some I don't. But uh, there's been a lot of them that have seen you know some of your content and some of your success, and they ask me a lot. They're like, "There's no way that dude throws a three sixteenths ounce." in all these different conditions. And I'm like, well, we only make a, a quarter and that's a relatively new thing. A, a lot of what Matt and Terry have done with a stupid tube, it's literally just a 3 16 ounce head, right? Yep. And, and so, and a lot of times I'm, I'm trying to get hung up without hanging the hook up. So right. I'm gonna, I wanna hang that head up against something. And then whenever I put a little pressure on it, it's just gonna stand up and kind of wave, just like a crawdad would raising his pinchers. I mean, I. That's how I feel that's what's going on. Right. In my head, that's what I'm trying to do. I think a lot of times when somebody gets a tube for the first time, they're trying to make it work. They're trying to do something, make the bait do something. And you don't have to. Just basically stay in contact the whole time. And if you lose contact, reel it in. I mean, it's you got too deep or there's nothing there. Right. I've had that conversation with, you know, customers and even media folks that ask about how much you guys use it and the extent that you use it. For you guys, it, it's more of a state of mind. Right. A lot of people get in their tackle box and they're like, oh, I think they might bite this today, or I think they might bite that today. And you guys take off with it, and it's, I'm gonna go throw this thing till I figure out where they're eating it. It's basically finding an area that has fish to be able to do what you do the best. And hardly ever do you hear some doc talk, and then you go out there and win or do well doing what you heard somebody done. Right. I mean, that's how I feel about it. I agree with that, I agree with that. Man, I enjoy the fact that we're helping people catch fish. Right. You know, it, it sounds cliche or kind of hokey, but at the oh, end, it, it is because I hated that we were giving up a secret when in right. the beginning days. Right. But to people come back and say, "Hey, I done well," or "I done this and done that on it," yeah, that that's almost almost as good. Not quite <laughs> as good, but almost. We talked earlier about how competitive we are, and I feel the same way. I get it, right? Like I would I would love to not have anybody know about this thing, but um, we're doing it a little different, and and we're sharing it and your story has gave us a way to introduce them to a bait. Right. And, and that's a cool thing. And I know that we pulled the cover back on something that you guys have done a pretty good job of keeping to yourselves for a long, long time. Right. And, and 
Man, we're grateful as a company, Holly and I and, and Secret Lures as a whole, that we're willing to share it and, and willing to help us kind of try to monetize it. And, and I hope that seeing the things we're doing with the youth and, you know, now we're helping fund college programs, we're, we're doing things for high school anglers and we're essentially we're trading fishing lures for dollars to help these, these young anglers um, go and do what you do, do what I do, the stuff that we love to do. And that's all through a little bait. And that, that's kind of an amazing thing when you think about it. All right. Well, coming up, we'll see more of this bait in action and get an insider's look at what makes the stupid tube such a successful bait to throw. Before the road trips, the cool mornings, the hot cast iron, the short nights, and the long cast, there's one stop that you can't afford to miss. It's time to gear up and camp out at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Save on all your camping essentials, in store and online. Your adventure starts here. Stetson Blaylock! Tom Otten! Hank Terry, let's go! Garmin Live Scope, I tell you right now, if you don't have it, you are behind. It's just wild. It's like a video game. If you do not have that Garmin Live Scope, you are definitely missing out. Bassmaster Classic Champion! Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin. Fight your fish, not your fish finder. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Welcome back to Americana Outdoors. Now before we catch up with Danny and Matt, let's hear a little history on this stupid tube and how its unique actions are designed to trigger bites. Stupid tube started with me 17 or 18 years ago, I believe, and it started with a open hook and I'm fishing it around cover and getting hung up and my uncle Terry had I'd seen one rigged you know stupid style so I asked him to show it to me and when I started using it things changed and, and they really did just right off the bat I got a real quick lesson that this bait gets a lot of bites and it's just a confidence thing for me now I mean I know if I drop that in front of a fish it's gonna get bit what triggers the bite is just the erratic action of it. And you think about the fact that over the course of the season, these fish have seen hundreds of baits drop past their face, just bloop to the bottom. And with stupid tube, that thing hits and it may swim towards them, it may swim away from them, it, but it's gonna go in a spiral to the bottom and any kind of rod movement will make it dart and jump. So instead of moving in a linear fashion, just straight from point A to point B, it's bouncing all over the place. And the Stupid Tube is one of the few soft plastic baits that you can do that with and maintain bottom contact. And that's really a big part of what makes it work is that erratic action and that hunting behavior on the bottom. So Matt, I made a switch. I've seen that bait, size of the bait, all that stuff. And I went to a, uh, a new color that we do the dummy in, the big dummy, and a dark smoke. We spent a lot of time working crawfishy areas with crawfish colors and crawfish presentations and it's just they're it's just not clicking for us so now I'll take something that looks a little more like a bait fish pop it snap it fish it a little faster trying to get that reaction bite where maybe they're they're just so keyed in on bait right now that the the crawfish theme is you know maybe this will this will do it I don't know if it's right or it's not but it's just a matter of mixing things up and trying them in this transition period like this I think anything you can do you know, the more presentations and offerings, the more likely you are to hit on something. All the books I've read said there should be one here. Uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> there we go. Mink's eating a snake, Matt's catching a bass. There we go. So those books are right. The book's right, it was right where he's supposed to be. Yeah, he's, he's close to a keeper, I'm not sure he is, but. Is he in the middle of the ditch, Matt, or on the edge? Or no, you... just about two foot off of it. I throw a stupid tube when it's tough because it just gets bites. It's not really finesse, but it's a finesse presentation. And I can flip it and I can skip it and I'll fish it on rock or wood or deep or there's just a lot of things I can do with it. And that's something that people that are throwing it are going to learn. The stupid tube is a custom designed tube and jig head that work together as a weedless fishing system. 
The original stupid tube is a 3.7 inch tube developed by Terry McWilliams and Matt McCoy that sent them both to the Bassmaster Classic. The largest size stupid tube available is the 4.5 Big Dummy, which Danny has just caught his first fish of the day on. I think that's probably about two pounds heavier than yours for what it's worth. At least. <laughs> oh, Big Dummy. So many people think that's, uh, you know, I'm not fishing around that size of fish or whatever, and it, it's really not a big fish bait. It, it, you definitely get good quality bites on it from time to time, no doubt, you know. But I've been shocked at the way a little fish will get a hold of that big tube. It's like you said, you think all the times you see a little fish chasing something big or big right. old tail sticking out of a little bitty bass and... 10 inch worm. Got a lot of short fish on a 10 inch worm. That's a good point, yeah, and it's not too big. But yeah, it came right up through that same bait fish that you had just, you know, you just brought a bait through there and I think you actually busted him up and then he tried to eat him. Uh-oh, same deal. Stay down. There you go. That didn't last long, did it? Yeah. Look at how skinny he is. <laughs> he's he got both eyes up. Flat choked it. Yeah, that's cool. Right when you were fighting that fish, man, I turned around and that was there were fish schooling right there at the mouth of that bridge and they were bigger. There's another little area like this around the corner. It's a little pocket with wood laying in it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about even fishing it until. When you see that, doesn't that make you feel like the dock and this little yeah. stake bed and some of that could potentially have some same deal, right? Some right. shallow fish pulled up around it. But it was fun having big bass for a second. You didn't let me enjoy it very long though. I hadn't even got a chance to gloat and you, uh, I see yours, I'll raise you one. Coming up, we're moving to shallower waters and switching up presentation styles. And we'll take a look at how to rig a stupid tube. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z Series, unleash next level performance. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. From sun up to sun down, day in and day out, we work hard, we play hard, and to keep us going during those long hours, we demand performance. <laughs> Angle Coolers, the original high performance cooler. Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. Secret Lures, the secret is out. Sunline, the strength to guarantee your confidence. Angle, the original high performance cooler. Welcome back to Americana Outdoors. Our duo has moved over to shallower waters and with this new depth comes a change in presentation. Matt, try not to blow through this stuff real quick. I am going from my main lake ledge head to just a heavy duty hook that that three eighths and this shallow of stuff you know i got that bite on it but i i feel like i was falling past the cover a little quicker than i wanted to right and we've got that heavy duty head that kind of fills that gap between the little stuff you like and the great big ledge head stuff and this is you know 10 foot and less this is the perfect depth range to to run that heavy duty head in the big dummy same bait and i'll end up with a totally different look because I'll shave all that weight out of it. You know, when I'm out dragging bottom and, and trying to keep bottom contact on the main lake, I like something more like that. That's, that's the smallest of the ledge heads that we make, but it's still 3 eighths of an ounce. And now that we've moved shallow, I'm going with quarter ounce heavy duty, and that'll allow me to get around this cover without falling past it quite so quick with the, the hope of seducing a big one into biting. Uh-oh. Now that one looked thick. That one looked, oh, that one's thick. That a boy. Oh. Finally, pretty decent fish. 
uh, man, I just got chills. Look at that. Can you catch those chills on my arm. I'm going to mm. tell you about something. <laughs> my best, one of my best friends I grew up with is burying his dad today. And it's the place where I started fishing by myself. And I was just thinking about him. That's, that's what just happened. Mm. It's kind of wild. And she's gonna jump too. Oh yeah. Wow. Weird deal. Wasn't like any place we've gotten a bite before and it wasn't of the same size or <laughs> well, quite. You can't fake those pills. No, I know, I know. I, I got them too and I don't, I don't know the who or the I, what. But I didn't I, hardly have that fish in the boat yet and they'd already popped up. That's... Anyway, that one's for you, Charlie. <laughs> right on. While Matt and Denny wrap up in this area of Kentucky Lake, let's hear the secret to rigging the stupid tube the right way that will guarantee not just getting bites, but reeling in lots of catches as well. First thing I can suggest to people is before you ever poke a hole in your tube, take a look at where your jig head hook needs to be coming out of your tube. If you do it correctly, that hook should lay flat on the back of the tube. What worked out well for me was to look at how a jig head matches up with my thumb size. I know if I grab that thing roughly the length of my thumbnail, I'm gonna come out in the right spot. If I hook my finger, I went too far forward. If I miss my finger, I'm too far back. Then I go and I make sure I'm centered in the middle of the tube. Once I've got that center, I'll grab a hold of it like this. I'm coming down the tube and I'm kind of watching that hook point. Where is it at? Where is it at? And I get right to the end of my thumb and I can feel it and I pop it out. Before I go any farther, I look and make sure it looks like I'm coming down the center line of the tube. In this case, I am. It's laying right down the middle, and I'm the right distance back from the tube. So, got that in there. I double check that I'm square and running down the center line of my tube, and then I just start working this quarter ounce in. With the smaller sizes, you can just pull it in there and make the turn. With the quarter ounce, you've got to work the plastic. Now I'm getting to the difficult spot. I'm getting ready to make this turn. To make that turn, I'm pulling and working from the top on this quarter ounce head. And right there, it just happened. It popped right over the eyelet, and I'm snugging it into the tip, and I have not torn out the bottom. So the jig head's been brought around, the hook's running right down the center. The next thing I do is I turn it around, and I personally fold the tube up along the hook shank, because then I can see that that hook is still staying centered. Follow it all the way up, and all I'm doing is pushing the butt of that tube up towards it. So now I'm going to pop that through and start working it around. That's about as good as you're going to see. And if you notice, that hook point's already laying flat on the back. If your hook point is sticking up at a 45, you have succeeded in making a stick and rock and dock snagging machine. But if you've got it laying flat, you've got what we intended for you to do. And the last thing I do is I double check and I make sure I've got my plastic centered up on the tip and then I pop the eyelet out. That tube is ready to go. Coming up, we're making our way over to the final location as Danny and Matt attempt to land one last fish before wrapping up this successful day on the water. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. You know that guy that's always bringing in big ones from offshore? He's got secret lures. That guy that can pull out a spinning rod and start catching them when you can't buy a bite. He's got secret lures. What about that guy that can follow you down the bank and catch what you left behind? He's got secret lures. Oh, yeah, good one. If you are ready to be that guy, get your secret lures today at secretlures.com. You've been waiting all week for this. And Sunline wants to make sure you're ready for it with bulk spools of all your favorite fishing lines. That's so fun. My whole team ready. Big tricks, big things we want. Bulk up with Sunline. Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by Power Pole.
total boat control. Outdoor Action TV, stream your favorite shows. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. We ran a lot of different stuff throughout the day trying to build upon the pattern and it kept coming back to isolated brush right out off the bank and we went in a little pocket and as we come in we're coming by all these barges and I'm thinking well they're they're out off the bank there's not really anything with them that I that I would target and as we round that last barge I look over and I see a barge cell and that is the absolute perfect example of the industrial structure that I've fished my whole life. There we go. <laughs> I told you I knew how to play that game, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> you need help? No, I don't need help. I'm just <laughs> gonna relish help? it for a minute. <laughs> he bop tripped me and knocked me down. And it all worked, which that don't happen all the time either. Usually somebody does that to you. They, they are not catching a fish. And I, it might have been the best fish of the day. But he sidestepped me and slung it in there. And to see the excitement in his face was almost worth the whole day. I think that he, he got pretty fired up on that one. Ah. Uh, I've always been a procrastinator, and if it wasn't for the last minute, I probably wouldn't get anything done. And I'm glad to get this one at the end of the day. It's, uh, you know, just a good solid keeper, but we talk about every catch is big. For me, like me personally, that was huge to get that one. And when you, when you approached it, I knew no matter what, you were going to go left, center, or right. So I knew no matter what, I was going to have two options. And when you went left, like the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I'm like, he left me an open, deep side of a barge cell between that boat. Uh -huh. One thing I've watched you do that I am not consistently doing is I watched you, you let it fall on slack line, regardless of whether it's 12 inches or 12 feet deep. You talk about that slack line, if you've watched me all day, like you said, mm -hmm. a lot of times when I, when I do that and then you see me do that, yeah. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm giving it line. If I don't do that, you'll see me do that. It's not because I'm backlashed. I'm wanting it to fall right where I put it. Man, I learned something cool there. I caught a fish on the kind of cover that I love to catch fish on. and. Personally, as far as I'm concerned, I just tied you with keepers. So <laughs> boom, buddy. That was great. Absolutely great. Call it a day. Call it a day, man. To come out here oh, yeah. and pretty much only throw a stupid tube and without any practice and run the stuff that we could throw it on. Yeah. It's really not that bad of a day. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't about catching everything that was available. It was out going out and doing our stuff, learning a little bit, hopefully sharing a little bit about the brand, our story, and, and your techniques and tactics. I learned some stuff, and hopefully the viewers did too. Yeah, had a and, good time, man. Yep, got a good, got a good chance to go do it again too now. Before we wrap up this show, let's hear some closing thoughts from Danny and his wife, Holly, on how this journey with Secret Lures has had a wonderful impact on their lives. Secret Lures as a whole has been a great project for us. The, the brand is not re necessarily new, it's just our portion of the story is. He comes home one day and uh, he's like, how do you feel about buying a small tackle company? I was like, well, that sounds great. You know, we love fishing and we know we can work together. I was like, why not? At this point, we've been working on it for a couple years and, and we really started with the tube products because we felt like that was the best untold story we have. We have expanded from a handful of colors and two sizes of jig heads up to, well, I think at this point we're at 15 or 17 different colors. We're three different sizes. We're now 12 different jig heads. So we've really had a lot of explosive growth there and, and I still feel like we're just scratching the surface. One day I woke up, I was like, what happened to our little tackle company? It was like, you know, it, it blew up, which is wonderful. It, it's great. Secret Lures has almost 200 unique items. We've got football jigs, we've got a fantastic swim jig, make some good flipping jigs in a few different configurations depending on what you want to do. Make some great terminal tackle in terms of shaky heads and the lead shaker. You know, that's, that's a cool product for Kentucky Lake. That particular product has won multiple six-figure events down here. Because we've been able to do tackle, we've made great friends and we've made customers who have become friends and we've got to go places and do things like this. When we can sell a good product to people and they get that same enjoyment that we do, and you get to share that experience with them. I always tell them, it's like, it makes my heart happy. When you can do something you love and it makes you and your partner's heart happy, I, I don't know what else a person can ask for. I just feel really blessed to be a part of this. and. People say, how does it feel to own it? And I just laugh. I say, I don't own Secret Lures, it owns me. It's permeated every aspect of our life and, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Hey, thank you for watching and join us next week on a new episode of Americana Outdoors. 
Americana Outdoors is a Careco TV production. I got my power pole down Stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake Sitting so still in the wind and the waves Could even be a hurricane I got my power pole down You know, when I look at the tournaments I've won, probably four or five of the boats that I've won have been on a tube. But I had completely gotten away from flipping a tube because nobody, nobody made one soft enough. Big Bite has come with this new tour series of baits. The thing that's probably the most unique is when you look at that bait, the salt just rolls out of it. And to me, that is the reason a fish bites a tube and hangs on to it. This isn't one of those, let's go out and catch some smallmouth tube. This is a let's get it done tube.